Here we will draw the cavernous sinus. Begin with a coronal diagram, show its planes of orientation, and show the following anatomic landmarks. The cella tersica of the sphenoid bone and the pituitary body, the base of the brain and underlying optic nerves, and the medial edge of the temporal lobe. Then draw one of the paired sphenoid sinuses within the sphenoid bone. Next, draw one of the bilateral cavernous sinuses between the cella tersica and the temporal lobe. Show that the sphenoid sinuses are air-filled, whereas the cavernous sinuses are filled with venous blood. Along the lateral wall of one of the cavernous sinuses, from superior to inferior, label cranial nerves 3 and 4 using brackets, and then the first and second divisions of cranial nerve 5. Next, medial to the first division of cranial nerve 5, label cranial nerve 6. Then within the medial aspect of the cavernous sinus, label the internal carotid artery. Finally, draw another portion of the internal carotid artery in between the roof of the cavernous sinus and the ipsilateral optic nerve. Now we will draw the cavernous sinus in oblique view. Begin with our planes of orientation and then draw the anterior clinoid process. Medial to it, label the optic canal, within which runs the ophthalmic branch of the internal carotid artery, and lateral to the anterior clinoid process, draw the superior orbital fissure. Posterior to the superior orbital fissure, draw foramen rotundum, and posterior to it, draw foramen ovale. Next, indicate that cranial nerve 2 passes through the optic canal, and then that cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6 pass through the superior orbital fissure. Now show that cranial nerve 5, 1 passes through the superior orbital fissure, 5, 2 passes through foramen rotundum, and 5, 3 passes through foramen ovale. It does not enter the cavernous sinus. All three divisions of the trigeminal nerve join as the trigeminal ganglion. Finally, show the walls of the cavernous sinus. Its roof lies at the level of the anterior clinoid process. Anteriorly, the cavernous sinus extends to the superior orbital fissure. Posteriorly, it reaches the clivus. Medially, it neighbors the cella tersica. And laterally, it neighbors the medial temporal lobe. This concludes our diagram.